Environmental intelligence provides very critical information to a variety of economic sectors, as well as for the public that need this information uh, very quickly in order to take action or make decisions that could protect their lives and property. And this Center for Satellite Applications and Research is charged with performing calibration and validation of all of NOAA's satellite sensors that launch into space and operate on a 24-7 basis. The collaboration with NOAA is really focused around improving the use of satellite observations. This is with NOAA Nestis. Um, it's, a, it's a pilot, it's a research effort to use machine learning to see how well we can improve the way that we use satellite data to help weather forecasts. We only use about 3% of satellite data to perform data simulation because the process is computationally expensive. But with machine learning, we can really use efficient methods to sift through and to judge the quality and relevance of the data and use it more effectively for the data simulation process. From our perspective and within NOAA, uh, we provide expertise in terms of using satellite observations and understanding the information that is within those observations and then the applications that it, they can be applied to, whether it's for situational awareness and providing analyses of environmental conditions or for initializing numerical weather prediction forecast models. Where Google comes into the picture, Google has vast experience with machine learning and artificial intelligence applications, as well as with building cloud architectures for use in environmental data processing. We didn't go into the AI techniques per se. What we did is leverage the AI techniques as they exist now in other fields, in the medical field, in the video industry field, in the gaming industry, and we leveraged that. So we leveraged it and used those tools with some fine tuning to our field. And that was the beauty of it. So we didn't necessarily go and reinvented the wheel of AI. We just exploited it, leveraged it, fine-tuned it, and applied it to what we are doing in NOAA. AI and ML methods in general are uh, very efficient uh, because they are uh, naturally implemented on GPU. We found speed-ups on the order of 10 times to 100 times of uh, emulation of the physical processes that are required for processing of satellite data and, and forecasting. That in and of itself allows us to use up to 100% of the satellite data, whereas traditionally it's, it's around 5 to 10%. Our AI-based assimilation of shows a relative improvement over uh, assimilation of no satellite data, similar to the actual data assimilation that NOAA runs operationally. Our collaboration with NOAA mainly focused around two specific topics. One was post-processing, uh, and the other was data assimilation. So I worked specifically on post-processing, which means removing biases in numerical weather prediction forecasts. Um, so we applied uh, various machine learning techniques over different parts of the globe, post-processing in effectively the entire globe for one to seven day forecasts, improving the current forecasts for all different weather variables like temperature, geopotential height, and we showed results for the same that we will be publishing for post-processing setup soon. Uh, some of the main takeaways from the paper are machine learning can be really good at understanding some of the local biases in the data, uh, learning from a lot of historical data and post-processing it, giving results in seconds, so adding almost no latency to the existing numerical weather prediction techniques. The downside, of course, is um, which we are working on researching more is machine learning can tend to blur out the numerical weather prediction forecasts. So they don't yield as sharp results as we expect, especially for extreme weather. We are continuing to research on this topic. We are continuing to install new observation methods, new satellites, and so forth. The machine learning techniques will scale with that. So we are able to process vast amounts of information and to use this effectively to improve the quality of our forecasts. And I think that this is one of the keys to the future is that we use these very data-driven, highly efficient processes to maximize the value of our investments in our 
satellite and observation fleet. Through this collaboration, we are providing the seeds for a new system that will be more efficient, that will be inclusive of a lot more satellite data and a lot more environmental data, and therefore would provide better and more comprehensive understanding of the environment. We will expand that to other Earth system components, be the atmosphere, the ocean, the hydrology, and even the uh, space weather in the future.